Hello and welcome to our healthcare series of many webinars. My name is Lucinda Nord and I'm with Indiana Association of United Ways and I'd like to welcome you to this first in our series of several uh, many sessions around healthcare, the role of 211, the role of United Ways and our navigators. Let's begin. In this first session, we're going to actually talk about the Affordable Care Act, so it may be a review for several, but we'll talk about what it is, how it's being implemented in Indiana, where to find more information, and uh, with each of the sessions, we will end with a review of the key ideas. So Congress passed the Patient, and Protection, Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act in 2010 with a number of intended outcomes. Uh, we commonly call this uh, act, this law, the new health care law or ACA, and those intended outcomes had to do with things like affordability, making sure that health care would be more affordable, that we'd be reducing overall health costs, looking at the issue of portability, recognizing that many individuals still receive their health care through their employer and uh, this would help ensure that people don't lose their health insurance when they change jobs. Another intended outcome surrounds accessibility and most people are already familiar with the uh, the part of the law that says you cannot lose your health insurance because of pre-existing conditions and high-risk patients like HIV patients now have access to health insurance. A fourth intended outcome had to do with wellness and prevention, so we see new preventative care measures in coverage options. And then a fifth outcome that's intended with the ACA involves quality, really starting to reform how care is paid for, that we move toward a pay for uh, outcomes rather than fee for services. As you are aware, the Supreme Court did uphold the law, so the law is in place, including the individual mandate, which says that individuals must carry health insurance if they are above poverty. Uh, there was one part of the health care law that was not upheld by the Supreme Court, and that is the provision that now allows states the option of expanding Medicaid or not, uh, whereas it was part of the, the law before. So we will talk about that Medicaid expansion issue. The ACA has been in uh, implementation mode for now four years. Uh, 2014 offers perhaps one of the most substantial years for the public because it is the effective date for a lot of provisions, including the individual mandate. It's the time that we're having a lot of conversation about Medicaid expansion and coverage expansion, and the new uh, tax credits are actually available. Uh, for more information about healthcare.gov, you can learn about it at, um, at the national website healthcare.gov. Excuse me, for more information about the ACA, you can learn about it at healthcare.gov. So how is Indiana implementing it? And this is probably what you're most interested in. So the ACA was passed by Congress and then uh, it allowed each state to uh, take a certain kind of role. And in the Indiana General Assembly, uh, legislators uh, wanted to uh, make some key decisions about do we offer a state-based exchange or participate in the federal exchange, uh, what kind of essential health benefits, um, how do we handle the Medicaid expansion issue, and then some other issues around um, how do we deal with our own high-risk pool that we have, that's the ITCHIA pool. Um, so uh, there was a bill passed that became law that um, tried to address a number of these uh, issues leveling the playing field, making sure that the state Department of Insurance still had some oversight of providers, for example, um, and uh, most notably offering uh, the authority to the governor to continue the negotiations with the federal government, with the Centers for Medicaid or Medicare and Medicaid Services, also known as CMS, um, on the issue of Medicaid expansion. So in our state, the Indiana General Assembly uh, did not decide whether or not to, uh, to expand Medicaid, but left that to the governor. 
and we will talk about that as it relates to HIP. So in terms of the implementation in Indiana, um, we, like in all states, there is an expectation that every plan that's offered in the insurance marketplace will offer 10 essential health benefits and those are defined there on the page. Um, as I mentioned, Indiana Department of Insurance through the state retains some oversight over providers in Indiana. Uh, we have as a state elected to participate in the federally facilitated exchange, also known as the federal marketplace, rather than creating our own state-based exchange. And that federally facilitated, facilitated marketplace um, is really targeted for those individuals with incomes above 100% of poverty and the subsidies are provided for those between with incomes between 100% and 400% of poverty and in Indiana that comprises about 400 to 450,000 Hoosiers we've also seen an estimate of about 525,000 Hoosiers in that category as I mentioned, Indiana has not expanded Medicaid for individuals between the current Medicaid eligibility level, which is about 24% of federal poverty level, um, to 100%, but is exp seeking expansion of the Healthy Indiana Plan, also known as HIP. So here's how um, many folks in Indiana already get their insurance. So you know that if an individual is over 65, they more than likely qualify for Medicare. So this really addresses the non-elderly population in Indiana. As I mentioned earlier, about two-thirds of individuals receive their health insurance through, their through an employer-based plan or an employer-sponsored plan. About 50% of our population is uninsured and about 18% uh, is on Medicaid. So what does that mean in terms of numbers? What it means is that of our 6.5 million Hoosiers in our state, about 1.1 million of them were on Medicaid last year. About almost that number, uh, the estimates uh, are between about 880,000 to 909,000 Hoosiers are uninsured. And of the uninsured group, it breaks down to about half below poverty and half above poverty. And then there are about 35 to 37,000 Hoosiers currently on the Healthy Indiana Plan, or HIP. Um, and there is a waiting list of individuals uh, waiting to get on HIP. HIP is a Medicaid program, and we will talk about that in this session. So this next slide just gives you an idea of the poverty thresholds. Um, some people don't know how much uh, the, the poverty rate is. So that second column there, the first column gives you how large a household size, is, size might be. Uh, and the second column gives you the 100% of poverty. You see some other rates in between, all the way up to 400% of poverty over on the right. So individuals with incomes uh, for their household between the 100% and 400% would be eligible to participate to purchase health insurance, private health insurance on the marketplace um, if their incomes are in that range and they would be eligible for either perhaps some subsidy if they're toward the lower end of the range or some premium tax credits toward the higher end of the range. So next we're going to talk a little bit about HIP HIP is a Medicaid program. Um, it's also called the Healthy Indiana Plan. It was enacted by our legislature and then applied through the federal government on a Medicaid waiver. We have extended that program uh, many years and there's been a process to request to extend it again. Last September we were actually granted as a state um, granted another one-year extension. So currently, Healthy Indiana Plan is um, approved by the federal government through the end of 2014. The HIP program is designed a little bit different than um, other traditional Medicaid programs in that individuals who participate on it need to buy into it by contributing to a power account and then certain services are available and the, the uh, types of physicians and 
in uh, hospitals get a different pay rate, so there may be a different pool of potential providers who are available on the HIP program. There have been some changes to the HIP program, partly because of ACA and the interrelationship with ACA, um, and there's lots of information available about how to apply. There's a strong desire um, by the, the governor and the n number of individuals in the legislature to make HIP our Medicaid expansion vehicle or our some form of our Medicaid expansion vehicle moving forward uh, to cover the rest of the uninsured who are low income, below poverty. Um, that is what's currently being negotiated between Governor Pence and the federal government. And we anticipate that that will happen sometime in February of this year. Uh, excuse me, the negotiation will take place in February of this year. We don't anticipate that the decision won't be that fast. We'd love it to be that fast, but um, we know that the negotiations are happening in February. Let's talk about the marketplace. So the marketplace, uh, as I mentioned with the poverty chart, allows individuals with incomes between 100% to 400% of the poverty level to purchase health insurance with some sort of sliding scale um, premium and uh, with either a, a subsidy that helps that reduce that initial payment um, and monthly payment or tax credits that then show up on the 2015, uh, the, the tax return for 2014 when you file in 2015. The open enrollment period began in October. There were lots of bumps in the road with the healthcare gov website and with the enrollment process, um, but fortunately that has smoothed out. Um, it does pose a challenge though to get as many people enrolled as possible uh, by the end of March, which is the open enrollment period. Consumers can sort of compare notes, uh, compare costs, and compare plans on the website or through the assistance of a navigator before they make a decision. In Indiana, there are currently four plans, qualified health plans, offering insurance in the marketplace. Um, they all offer some level of those essential health benefits. The plans are defined in four levels, or what we call the metal plans, uh, where we start out with the sort of lowest, low-cost plan called the bronze plan, and uh, leading up through the silver, gold, and platinum plans. A bronze plan would have a much lower uh, premium, but a much higher deductible, uh, whereas a platinum plan would allow, would have a higher um, premium, but a, much, a lower perhaps deductible and copay. So it really, whether or not a person should select a particular type of plan really depends on their own ability to pay and more importantly, um, what kind of health care needs do they typically have? So a young and healthy person, for example, might elect for a bronze or a silver plan um, because uh, they don't anticipate a lot of health care costs. Um, uh, someone with ongoing health needs might choose um, one of the, the higher level metal plans. The premium subsidies and tax credits, it should be noted, are based on the modified adjusted gross income for the household or the MAGI for the household, and it's all connected to the tax filing status. So um, one of the questions that we will ask the service providers is about the tax filing status in that household. So how does the marketplace work? In terms of the online component or through the telephone, a person can create an account. And again, they do that either online at healthcare.gov or through the National Call Center. And then they can apply, check out the different plans. They pick a plan and then actually enroll. And the, the plan does not become effect, effective until they actually make their first payment. This map illustrates the coverage areas of those four plans that are currently operating in the marketplace. Again, Anthem plans and Medwise plans are pretty much available throughout the state with a couple exceptions. PHP is really in the northern Indiana at, um, and uh, a couple other regions. 
uh, and then coordinated care is, is really in the northeastern Indiana area. And this information is updated periodically through the Department of Insurance, again, which is overseeing those health care plans and which plans are available in Indiana. Our next slide shows us um, just a quick sample. Um, if you are a service provider and you work with clients and you really like to know the details about the, the costs, um, there's some wonderful training available through the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities that explains how that sliding scale uh, effect of the premium contribution um, and how MAGI is actually calculated. Again, going back to the complexity of a person's tax status for their household. So this chart just gives you a quick summary of, you know, if your income is, is closer to the poverty level, closer to that 100% level, your contribution is going to be 2% of your income. Whereas uh, if your income is uh, closer to the 400% of the federal poverty level, your expected contribution is going to be a little higher, the 9.5%. So what happens if you don't qualify to participate in the Medicaid program, in the HIP program, or in the new marketplace? Uh, we do have an anticipated um, couple to few hundred thousand Hoosiers who would fall into what we call the coverage gap, which means that they make too much for traditional Medicaid and too little to qualify for the marketplace. And for those individuals, they will continue to rely on safety net providers. Um, those are the free or volunteer run clinics. Um, they also include the health care centers, whether they be federally qualified health care centers, which you might hear abbreviated as FQHCs, or the Indiana funded and Indiana based health centers, um, might include the public health department that a lot of families still rely on for things like immunizations. Or in the case of an emergency need, um, there are the emergency rooms. This map here shows you from the Primary Health Care Association, gives you an idea of the locations of those health centers throughout the state. So where can you find more information? We are encouraging individuals to call 211 to uh, learn about the new health care options in Indiana or to receive a referral for the navigator so they can do a pr quick pre-screening to determine which um, where the family or the individual might fall in terms of eligibility. Um, there is of course the healthcare.gov or the National Call Center for uh, discussion about health care options in the new marketplace. And then there are several sites that provide detailed information about state-based programs, including pre-screening and um, policy questions, as well as um, actually how to apply. Consumers can apply, again, through 1-800 numbers, toll-free numbers, or through websites, and we've listed those there for you. Or a person can actually connect with a real live person uh, called a, a navigator or a certified application counselor, sometimes also called a sisters. So how do you decide if a person needs, is better served by uh, doing self-service or uh, going through a navigator. Well, we encourage you to think about um, what is the consumer, the client, or even your family member or friends understanding and experience with the health insurance in the healthcare system. So, for example, if it's a person who is uninsured and who has never had insurance before, they may need a little bit of education about um, how insurance works, what is a premium, what is a deductible, what is a copay. Um, if a person has um, a, a very complex situation in terms of their family or their health needs or their tax filing status, because again, um, much of this is based on, um, who is on who is eligible to be on their taxes filed on the same tax return together. So when you have situations where 
there are custody issues where one parent files one year and another parent files another year, or com complex health situations where there might be some questions about, is my doctor in my network, or is, is my hospital in, my, in this particular plan's network? Um, those kinds of questions could probably be best answered with a navigator. However, if a person is very comfortable with um, the concept of purchasing health insurance and accessing health care services, um, and they're comfortable with that level of decision making and maybe even shopping online. Um, maybe the online application and just going through healthcare.gov or the National Call Center might work for them. Uh, for many families though, it's uh, this is a big decision, so they might want to do a little online shopping first and then discuss the options before they make their decision. There are lots and lots of materials for organizations, and here are just a few samples. If you do want to engage in really promoting this to your clients, your, your families, your students, whatever type of organization you're serving, or maybe even your employees and your volunteers in your organization, um, there are free materials available, and this is the way that you access them in terms of uh, getting some, some of those official uh, materials and and I find that the the glossary of health coverage and medical terms is really helpful again for those folks who've been in, uninsured and not had a lot of contact with the healthcare system. For those um, want to, who do a lot of referring or connecting with the different divisions in state government, this ACA communication directory um, put out by the state of Indiana is actually very helpful in terms of giving you a quick reference guide to all the different 1-800 numbers and websites affiliated with the, the different types of Medicaid, Healthy Indiana Plan, and the like. So let's review our key ideas uh, as we wrap up this quick session. Uh, first, the Affordable Care Act is law. <laughs> if the ACA law was upheld, uh, the individual mandate is in effect. It went into effect this year in 2014, which means that people need to, to have insurance. Um, there are new health care options for uh, all kinds of covered services and for health insurance, and uh, we want to help educate folks about those new options. People with incomes between 100% and 400% of the federal poverty level may qualify for some sort of subsidies uh, through the marketplace, and that is based on their tax filing status. Whereas people with incomes below 100% of poverty may qualify for one of the many types of Medicaid for the Healthy Indiana Plan, or if they fall into that coverage gap, they could still access some of the safety net programs. There are certain processes required in order to be uh, eligible or to participate in any of these programs. Uh, March 31st is the deadline for um, the health insurance through the marketplace in terms of that open enrollment period, so that's a key date to remember. And that uh, finally, that help is available to compare the options and to enroll. So we are encouraging service providers to uh, make sure that they connect and with uh, navigators in their area to know the 211 websites, indiana211.org, so that they can learn about what kinds of other options might be available. That concludes that this is our first session of our healthcare series. Um, there on the left, you see the, the rest of the series. You're welcome to participate in any of those uh, quick webinars. Many are much shorter than this one. And uh, again, we thank you for your participation. We hope that this was helpful. Um, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me or our office uh, at Indiana Association of United Ways. Thank you very much.